Okay, YouTubers, this is a shout out to Harmony Turbines there in Latrose, PA, if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, keep a look at Harmony Turbines out there. So, here we are with the Tessa disaster that I'm going to make work, regardless how painful it is. So, here we go. Home General homeowner, I do have 19K in solar on the house, back shed. Two electric cars, blah, 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 right? The house is full electric. Three Tesla power walls for 40 kilowatts of backup power for the nighttime. Uh, prepper, in a sense. So, here we are with Tesla. We'll start off with the $1,000, $1,140 for this. Their junk box inverter and the charge controller that's not usable outside or any kind of damp location. So... We had to scratch the charge controller and inverter since the inverter was sent to me by Merit, which is for use in Ireland and the UK only. So that doesn't work here. So I don't know why he sent it to me. He says it needs a modification. I go, <laughs> customer and doesn't modify things. They get things plug and play. So here we are. You've seen the other videos. Everything's been done to this thing. So this basically, I won't spin it too much because it is actually hooked up to the controller inside and the inverter right now. So. Uh, this is finished just a little bit more of the JB weld in the blade sections up there. So these things are solid, solid. I did the uh, bottoms before and I just forgot to do the underside part up there. So that was one of my things I still have to do. So we have that. That's the first cost, a thousand dollars to start your journey. Then we go into the wind loads and the technical aspects. I do have a brother-in-law, which is a actual aerospace engineer so he figured the weight load for the tower which is this is the first section and basically engineered the data for me for mine to go to 50 feet which is the other sections are right there the top plate quarter inch steel the bottom plate cheryl out there at uh, harmony turbines was asking about this I had to fabricate this myself. This is basically a half inch steel plate, 25 by 25. Then the in inside triangle is 19 by 19 to match up the Series 55 tower from Ameririte out of Shelby, Ohio. And then the three quarter inch J bolts that go down in the concrete, three feet, the grounding rods, grounding wire. Grounding rod is actually down under there, buried eight inches below the surface. Uh, three quarter inch hardened bolts for the tilt and five eighths bolts for the holding the plate down four of them in different areas that plate of steel and the triangle was another five hundred and fifty dollars three hundred dollars to get it hot dip galvanized after I was done with it Another 200 plus some dollars in PVC pipe that's buried under the ground here to run the three-phase wild AC. There's the rest of the pipes there. They've got to be dug around to where I'm going to mount everything. So add that up for the thousand for the turbine, 300 for the cold dip or the hot dip galvanized, the uh, 500 plus for the hardware bolts and things. This is not including my labor to cut all that steel and to weld it which took a few days of cutting and welding half inch plate not easy then toss another three thousand out the window for the tower and that comes just with the tower pieces and the bolts that you know you connect them with so that part you're there you're looking at that concrete block that's in the ground it's one yard of concrete 1.2 actually it's six feet deep with a gravel base the plywood the two by fours i think that cost me another uh 80 bucks or something like that it was crazy for just for the two by fours and the plywood so throw in 80 bucks for that then the manual labor dig a six foot hole not unearthing any of the ground around here but dig it straight down so you have solid earth around you get the form in there and then pour 525 dollars worth of concrete into a hole boom that's another 500 gone so we're not even talking about the wires. The wires, I think it cost me 200 plus already for the three-phase AC wires, which those are not it. These are 
actually over here you can buy it at the bulk i needed so many feet so i got that for 68 cents and i got that one for 64 cents i think it was no 57 cents actually for the spool 57 dollars for that and then we'll forget the price on that one for the that's 170 feet of it so do the math 170 times 0.68 and you'll get the price on that one plus tax blah 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 all right so plug and play for you cheryl if somebody gets me a wind turbine that size that harmony turbine is going to have it's quite larger than that but it's going to have to have a mount and i'll show you the mounts on the piece here and this is very simple it's just the triangle size for that oversize for what the tower is i welded on the uh, galvanized pipe had a cold dip galvanized after that and i welded stainless steel bolts through the plate so that the generator just mounts on there boom and that's the uh, front leading edge there where my name's at and then the back so that's facing due south this is facing due north uh these clevises actually will be put back down at the 30 foot marker for my tilt now that's another subject we'll get into really quick this is a tilt plate so most people in their suburban neighborhood i have a neighbor right there my fence line goes up there there and back across thank god this whole thing blocks the solar array blocks the tower if some catastrophic failure happened for some reason which i don't see only the tower giving way under extreme strong winds it would so back to the tower we got the the uh, top plate that now this tilt plate is going to go 30 feet it's going to come out here go out here and out by these bricks here and tilt it down this way i can install the next part it cost a hundred and i think 50 150 for the hand crank which is a uh, capable of doing 1500 pound lift it's a uh hand crank with brake so it's for lifting then we gotta fabricate more steel basically going from these bolts or the edge of the plate here across back over up to this point here where the hand crank is going to be on a bar and then a pulley wheel the pulley wheel will be up here thus going to the third section to stainless steel um, pulleys and then back down to the base back here and then back out 30 feet to the uh, connection point for the pulley system so we can hand crank this down. So that was, and I forgot the cost. It might've been, uh, I got 250 or 500 feet of, I think it was 250 feet of quarter inch stainless steel cable. So add that cost in right there. I think that was 150 or something like that. Some, I forget these prices now. And then the hand cranks 150 then the pulleys were like another 80 dollars for stainless steel pulleys because they're going to be out in the weather the whole time they're not going to be removed so that's the other cost now we'll go back in so here you have your turbine three phase ac coming out of it now this is the big part for the consumer when you purchase a turbine where are you going to send that power to this is going to go three phase ac here's a shout out to power one they bought up aurora and this is their interface box win interface box so you take your three phase ac do all the magic engineers do and bring it out as bulk dc which will come over to your inverter this box is gold it's the last one on the internet that i could find thank god i got it otherwise i'd have a thousand dollar block sitting outside with a whole bunch of extra stuff that would never work so this is essential this interface box so it takes the power turns it to dc once you have turned it to dc this is a power one aurora pvi 6000 give you a shot of the side there i think this is outdoor us wind that's what it is and if you take note there's the production date week 42 2010 they don't make these anymore i do have access to one more brand new one so this will take and this is what was already done by power one for the wind inverter they already put the jumpers in where it's necessary they switched the 
connections by putting a sticker over it so you have one two and three instead of the actual load bearing ones but they have to be load load and common and this is not this is the ground wire but i'm going to put it to the common bar on the sub panel so if you look in here they have their wiring diagram for each phase which it's set up for so 240 and this one says in the inside it's it was set up for 240 uh split phase so one is l1 load one load two and then neutral for there not a ground a neutral so and then they have their grounding point separate in here so the earth ground will go there earthing ground there and then they have the earthing ground over here on the stud here on the interface box so there you go then you have to mount this you have to run that pvc that cost me about i think i was i think i walked out of the store like 170 dollars worth of wire uh ground wire for the lightning oh there yeah, was the other one see uh you have to put grounding rods in so you got a grounding rod out there by the tower and then a grounding rod for these guys that have an earthing ground out below them then you also have a place you've got this power coming to grid i'm not doing the battery bank so the battery bank is not something i want to mess with or even have so this is going to be mounted on the outside of that shed wall over there so it's going to come out to the ac there's another more expense which i luckily because i still have it from the solar i have a uh, three line disconnect so three phase ac has come down to a disconnect then it has to go to the interface box interface box pvc over to the inverter the inverter to a disconnect from the uh, grid and then onward from the there the disconnect into the grid uh, one other thing here, all these have to have order tight fittings, which I haven't gotten those yet because I haven't planned out the wiring setup. But what I'm going to use is most likely all going to be the uh, uh, 10 gauge and uh, 8 gauge when I do the heavier loads from here. Um, this is also the brake. So it all like has a brake system. So you have to hook that to what the manufacturer designed for the wind turbine and not that I trust Tess up or anything, but this is what they sent for the dump load in their box. I took it out of their box because it's just a tin box. I'll show you here in a second. Hook that up for there for the brake. Uh, they also have it here, which is nice, for the MPP, for the power curve for the wind turbine. You have to have one of those. And since Tess up did not send me any kind of data for that, I have to actually manually type that into the inverter. So now the software, put these. I took these off yesterday when I was putting these fittings in because it is completely impossible to get your hands in there to get any of these things done. So I did take a picture of that beforehand, black, yellow, white on the sequence on these three pins. So the power curve has to be put into this. So it's gotta be programmed. You have to power this up somehow uh giving this i think a minimum 150 volt dc because this is what it's set for now or up to a minimum 50 to get it to come on so i can program it with the computer plugged into the rc or the uh internet jack ports so i forget what they are rs 485s so this was nice this pulls out two phases of these while they see and compares it with its speed and puts it over here so it knows the speed and where on the power curve the wind turbine's at. So that part is important, I guess. Uh, still not fully understanding how they get that sensing from here, but they do. All electronic consuming. Uh, I thought you had to hook something up to the actual wind turbine to get its speed, but this is basically taking it off the wild AC, how much the frequency changes or how much power is putting out based on the wind speed. So. That's all for the engineers. So that goes into your wind, into your inverter, so it can function. So that's about it, uh, cost-wise. You have to add all that up. The uh, I'm somewhere I think about eight, twelve thousand dollars into this because I this this inverter right here cost me three thousand uh, dollars. They don't make them anymore, but the guy has one. I still can have access to another one. He still hasn't sold this is paid 440 for on ebay 
It seems to be the last one on the universe. No one else has them. I've checked websites after websites all around the globe, outside the United States and everything. So if anybody can find one of those, let me know. I'd definitely buy it from you just to have a backup. So then you got your, uh, I think this was $80 for the 100 amp box because you have to have at least 40 amps for this. I have to re trough some of my solar that I'm redoing to put a 100 amp box so the solar has 320 amps and then this one has the 40 amp on there. So all these expenses add up. And I, like I said, I, I have to sit down. I did keep a paper and I'm gonna track my receipts. I just haven't sat added up, up lately. So plug and play for Cheryl there out at Harmony Turbines out in uh, Pennsylvania in the United States. You know, hopefully you guys get your product going, but this is something the customer is going to look at because they have to get it from that wind turbine, three-phase AC from a generator to an inverter, you know, interface box or slash charge controller, which a lot of guys out there are like, oh, no problem. There's so many different hybrid ones. Something that's designed for your wind turbine would be great because you need that. Then you need the inverter to either put it to the grid or to the use of power if somebody's doing it or from this thing if they're going to use this as a charge controller to their batteries batteries back to an inverter and inverter to the grid without the batteries it's great you're cutting out another large expense i mean batteries the maintenance lithium ions and all the rest of those uh new batteries they're coming out with they're expensive so this is not a easy task for a homeowner just to put together you know with spare cash i happen to be big into this as you can see, I got the uh, three power walls for the backup, like I said, you know, full electric house. So if you're in, you're in all the way, I should say. So uh, just a shout out again to Harmony Turbines. They really have a really great new generation of turbine coming out. I just need to reiterate to them that you have to make it user friendly. I mean, anybody can make a spinny thing that spins around, but to get it from that power to that, to this, to the grid, so you're producing power for your house, whatever, your farm, your barn, whatever. And again, I'm in a residential area. It's not as easy as you expect. Now you got the uh, ordinances of wind turbines and how high the towers and all that and get past that because they have to be at least... 10 meters 30 feet and then best for clean wind above the tree line so if it's not above the tree line don't waste your time or your money so if you got high trees around you and they're all around and your neighbors are not going to cut his trees down and you're not going to cut all your trees down to get clean air somewhere don't even waste your time so once again never buy tessup it's just a nightmare that's the other thing if you buy a turbine make sure it's to the aviation standards. Everything's balanced and uh, done right because if it's not, you're going to have problems and it's going to take itself apart, especially in the weather and the ice and the snow and everything else like that when it's blowing. All right, that's it for now. And that's a short video for uh, Harmony Turbines, man. Hopefully they uh, get their product to market and uh, can balance something because you also have to know the technical aspects of this whole thing about, uh, you know, the moments and how much load that you have to have in the ground to counter react the force of the wind on a turbine when it's just sitting still all right we'll end it there and uh i don't know if you guys can see i try to do my little thing for red bank it's red bank all right we'll call it quits